Hi everyone, this is Adiar Studios, and today we're going to be doing Drawing Cats. I have a few references here, and um, today we're going to focus specifically on faces. So we're going to start here with just a face, frontal. You can see, yeah. Now I may be focus focusing on uh, realistic faces today but I can do a bit of cartoon as well. So we're going to just do here. There, now we have the beginnings. It's kind of, let me see. You can see properly. Okay, um, now, many big cats are extremely different, so, and we're also going to be doing cats as well, so. This looks like a big cat, so I'm just going to do here. I'm going to be going through all the different big cats, because they're all extremely different. So we have here a frontal face. Now there's a couple things you have to remember, especially the ears and the muzzle. You can't make the muzzle too big, otherwise it's going to start looking like a dog. But it has to be pretty big anyways on a big cat. But it's got to be very wide as well. See here, this muzzle is pretty big. I guess you could say it can't be that long, because then you can get something like this. Or something like that. Which is more narrow, as you see. The eyes always have to be in a certain place. And you can make the ears tilting backwards or forwards. So this is how I do faces. Now, of course, you want to develop your own style, but these are just tips on how I do it. It's important not to make the ears too big, but a lot of big cats, like lions, for example, can have extremely big ears, especially when they're cubs. Try to make this a bit bigger. When I start my drawings, I always start with the nose. It's very good to start with the head because that way you can get your proportions correct. A lot of this comes with practice, but it can help to use certain things as references, like sizes and shapes of other things. That's really useful when it comes to horses. Now, so since this muzzle is so big, you could say this was a tiger or a lion or something. You can see? Okay. And um, with that, it's a good idea to keep the ears high because the lower the ears, it's going to make it look more cartoonish. Make sure the ears are nice and round. More of an oval shape. And this is a big tip, is when you're doing realistic, you don't want to make a very rigid jawline. It almost fades into the neck. Because if you look at real, at real cats, pictures of cats, you'll see that the fur on the neck tends to fold into the face. And there's not really a rigid jawline that's on some animals. But you have to be careful with this because this can make your cat look very fluffy. Of course, if you have a lion, if you have a lion, adding cheekbones can help because for some reason some have this.
Now, the nose I used right here is actually a cartoon nose. You want to do a nose rather like this. You want to have two bumps. Now this also changes depending on what species you're doing. But you want to have it more like that. And then there'll be some dark right here. So that's typically what you want the nose to look like. Now this can change. Such as if you have, say, a lynx, it'll be more rounder on top and far. It'll be very wide and very long, like that. And then you just have this. This is always here. You always have to remember it because it goes down into the down into the lip down here. And then the fur on top of the nose is extremely small, extremely short. And now when it comes to side profiles, people may find this the hardest because it's very easy to make your cat look like a dog. So suppose I was doing a cat. You want to bring the forehead down to make the muzzle smaller. And make sure not to make too much of a lip here. You may have to adjust it. And then the eyes are very, very big. Doing this kind of eye can help when you just have like two triangles like that instead of something like that because that can be a bit more difficult. Now when it comes to the ears, I have a special way of doing it. You may find something else. If you do it like that, like a triangle on the side, you can, like that, you can have ears on the sides. But a big, big difference between realistic and cartoon cats is the size of the ears. Because if you make them very big, you're going to have a more cartoon-like cat. need to bring it a bit closer there. There. Remember, ears are very thin. Like that. So that's how I would do a cat. The muzzle is a bit large on this one. You can make it smaller. But this size muzzle is round what you want. And then if you have a, 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 a cat with shorter fur and he's skinnier, you can show a bit of the bump of the neck right here. And if, of course, if you want a more realistic cat, you can not add this. Or you can add a bit of fluff like that or something like that. It's important to remember on cats that the shoulder blades are smaller than they would be on big cats. Now, when it comes to a frontal face, for when it comes to a frontal face for a house cat, you want to do something like this. Make your nose small. And then remember that the two pads are on either side and they're round. So make sure to follow that. This is also similar to Lynx. And then this area right here is wider than it would be in reference to a big cat. But it is still very small. Then make sure the nose is not too big. And then of course the eyes are going to be very wide. It is difficult, of course, to keep the eyes the same size as each other. Now this is a little thing I've been doing. When it comes to the forehead, you gotta make sure not to make it too up here or too down there. You kinda have to find the right position. You may have to erase a couple of times. But once you find it, it can be useful to make 
the forehead completely flat. Now this doesn't always happen, of course, it can be in different positions. Then, make sure to pay, pay important, make sure to pay a lot of attention to the ears. Like that. Okay. So this is around a house cat's face. And then you just build the fluff along the cheeks. You can make this slide. Now this is where it becomes really important when you get down here. Remember that unlike many other animals, the shoulders on a cat, which are about right here, are very high compared to other animals. So you're gonna have like a slouch like this almost. So then you'll have a drop in the shoulders. And make sure to keep make sure to keep the backbone. Um, circular. It does straighten out a lot of times, but that's mainly in feral cats and things like that. If you have a soft house cat who could be a bit chubby, then a rounder backbone could be better. There's not much muscle around here. So you have the face. Okay, then the neck. And remember, I'm doing this from a realistic approach. And then, here comes the feet. Proportions are extremely important with any animal. And it's important to practice a lot to get this down. Do this leg in a minute. House cats have very small paws, and their legs, their front legs, are rather thick compared to their paws. You may have to erase a couple times to get this proportion. Very important not to make it too small. Don't forget the do.